It turns out I didn't actually get rid of the cyano in this tank. Now, cyano, cyano, I never know how to say that. What's going on guys and well, welcome back to the channel. So it's time to sort out that reoccurring cyanobacteria problem in the discus aquarium behind me. But before we do anything, I want to swap out the filter that I've got in this side. Let me open them both up. In this side, I've got a little Oase 250, Fermo that is. And on this side, I've got the free 600. I've got 600 on that side and a 250. Well, Oase have been kind enough to send me the 800. I've got two of these. One of them has been going on a new tank that I'm gonna be setting up later on, a cool Amazon style tank. And this one, I'm gonna swap out for the 250. I'm gonna increase the flow in this whole tank and the filtration because these are the big fish. They get fed a lot. And I just feel that it needs a bit more of a boost. And it'll also help with some of the sort of issues we've got of the substrate not not being moved and or any waste collecting on it so yeah swap that one out and i think it's literally just going to be a case of unhooking that back section and then slotting it straight onto the top of here because it's all the same fitments yeah i was right look so this area here which is brilliant of Oase, it's exactly the same as that one there so upgrading is literally a case of unplugging it and plugging it back in but i do want to take all the you know filter media that i've got in this one and just put it into this one so we're fully seeded straight away Right, I can see already that is a massive increase in flow. Not so much that it's gonna affect the discus. Remember, they're from a river system, so this is not gonna bother them at all. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm sucking out all of the sand with just this little sort of siphon, little magic wand stick thing, comes down and then goes into the bucket. So all the dirty sand is in there. So I'll just drain that water off and just continue the process. This means I can get a thorough cleaning of it. now. You know, I tried to just put a chemical in and fix the issue. If it's a small issue, sometimes that'll work, but obviously there's something wrong, you know, that's causing the cyano to either come back or not go completely. Now, this is probably a flow issue. I mean, I know it's a flow issue because I've seen waste just collecting on the bottom and not moving. So I'm gonna do two things. Number one, I'm doing this big, big clean up, getting it thoroughly clean, putting it back in. And number two, we're gonna be getting some really cool quarries to go in this tank. Now, I know they've got some in my local fish store. I'm gonna go and buy them all <laughs> and then put them in here. They've been at the fish store for a while they've been observing them for me so i know that they're all good and all safe for the discus Click subscribe. there we go look we're all filled up Fresh water change, look at how good it all looks. Absolutely brilliant. So I did a 40% water change because it's been just over a week since I did the last one. Cleaned out the canister filter pre-filters. They were full of like, sort of old food that had gone down the little trap. Oh, sorry guys, sorry. <laughs> down the little trap down there. So sorry, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, so we've got a nice fresh start now, ready for those quarries to go in. So I've been a bit of a moron. I've had the aquariums that you can see behind me set up for like weeks now, and I kept getting quite a bit of fred algae in the one over my shoulder here. This is the Ember Tetra tank. I kept getting like sort of fred algae, uh, string algae, I guess. You know, it keeps coming back and I keep clearing it. Everything's great other than that. So what was going on? <laughs> well, it turns out I had the automatic light setting on, on for two weeks straight so this had no light off of it for two weeks yeah you get what i mean i only noticed because yesterday i was working till late i came in this room and all the lights were still on and i was thinking what's going on they should be off like an hour ago anyway so a tip there guys always make sure you check that all your settings are right on all your timers and don't just assume everything's going along right so we should be good now the fred algae should go after i clear it and then job done But yeah, back over to the discus. Let's go get ourselves some Cory catfish to get down on that substrate and stir it all up.
So you can see there, I've switched the light off. Just let these guys settle in a little bit. Now what I've got is nine total. I just bought all of them that were available. I've got the bronze quarries, five of them, and I've got four of the albino quarries, or albino, albino, whatever, who cares? But basically the albinos are the same as the bronze quarries. They just like got no pigment, so, which is brilliant. So technically it's nine of the same type of quarry. Nine quarries in a tank this big is a really good amount, I would say. And already I'm noticing some of that green buildup on the bottom of the tank. Only clean it yesterday it's already back so I think these coys are really going to do a great job of just sort of stirring it up and keeping that movement going in the bottom sand and stop that algae or cyanobacteria I'm not even sure what it is I think it is just algae now now to be honest some people saying it was because of the light duration so this is the only tank that I don't keep the lights on for like 14 hours this has like 11 or 12 I can't remember what I programmed in but obviously because it's just some Java ferns and Java moss it doesn't need the long photo periods in my opinion either way though I'm really looking forward to getting them in here I'm just gonna leave them for about 30 minutes to get used to the temperature and then we can release them <laughs> why am I being really sinister about this <laughs> You might be wondering why I'm not bothering with any sort of quarantine period. That's because these fish have been sat at that store for over three weeks. They've been monitored by the staff there for me. Nothing's changed in the system. Everything's good, no problems at all. So they are ready to go in. Right then, here we go, let's release them in. Go guys, go, 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 and the rest of you. Nice and gentle, and there's some more, one more. No, one more, all right, you come. There we go, Woohoo! Right, now, do me proud, guys, and sort this out. Looking good already, oh, that looks so good. Look, Discus are confused. No, that's not food, Discus. Leave them alone, right, we better feed the Discus quickly. So the discus got the food. I think what it is is me coming close to the tank and putting hands in and things like that. They thought they were getting fed. It got a little bit confused. These guys will be absolutely fine. I mean, a tiny little peck like that is not going to hurt them. Yeah, look, all good. We're all good. <laughs> so cute though. Coreys are a very schooling fish, so you, it is best to keep them in large numbers if possible. Now, if you've got like a tiny tank, you don't want to be sticking a load of them in. But I'd say. Some people say five. I reckon I've kept three before as a minimum together that scored really well and have done really well in some of my other tanks. I mean, if you look at what the internet says, it'll always tell you to go with 10 or 20 or something like that, but that's not always feasible to everyone, is it? But yeah, hopefully these guys are gonna now do a really good job of keeping that bottom you know, clean for me. Obviously at the moment, they're not just gonna start doing it straight away, but once they're settled in, well, to be fair, this little guy, he already seems pretty settled in the middle there. Nice one, guys. They look great though, didn't they? Oh, look. Hello, fella. <laughs> so the discus, when I feed them in the water, they uh, they tend to like to actually go around and, and, and get it off the floor or peck between the plants. They like doing that. It's, it's like they let it fall and then like to try and sort of go around and eat it all, which is fine, absolutely fine. Sometimes it tears up the scape a little bit, but it's their tank, it's their scape. I've not got a problem with that. Oh, I tell you what, just filming that little bit then and seeing that quarry just swim all the way down has really brought the tank to life. Look, we've got loads of sort of movement on the base now, as you'd expect. The quarries stay pretty low and they tend to just do a little quick dive up and down every now and again, which is quite fun to see. Be really, really interesting if we get some breeding action going on. It's not likely the eggs will hatch or anything because the discus will tend to peck them off if they lay them on the glass. I've had that happen before, in fact, in a different tank. But it's still all interesting to watch, isn't it? Oh, I love this tank. I love these fish. I love it, everything about it.
So a bit of an update on the Neon Tetra Aquarium you can see behind me. This one's been set up for getting on for a month now. It's doing absolutely fantastic. The fish are super healthy. Look at, look at the coloration on them. I'll do some close-ups, obviously. Now there was some mulm all building on the bottom sand, but that's completely cleared itself. I don't know how, but it has. I'm not complaining. Saves a job for me. But you remember recently I added that huge amount of moss section as well to hopefully get some spawning going on. Now I haven't added the cold water like everyone said, for not cold, but you know, cooler temperature water when doing a water change apparently that is going to bring on some breeding action so that is something i'm going to try very shortly i have seen the neons though darting in and out of it early in the morning when, I, when the lights come on so i think that is a sign from what i can tell from other videos i watch of breeding and you may also remember that in on the top here the uh the floating plants were starting to die off that's completely stopped now and it's doing really really good in fact i'm getting too many and i'm thinking about putting some of them across into the goldfish aquarium actually I think I will do that. How good will that look? The goldfish chrome with red root floaters all over it. Right, so I don't want too many, but if you let the floating plants build up in this tank, they start, start to sort of overlap and get pushed underneath each other, and then that just sort of kills them. So if I take out this section here and put that one in. There you go. Goldfish are going to be completely confused. What the hell is this guy putting in? Okay, that's not enough. We need more. Da -da 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 scoop these ones as well and another big one of those there we go oh look at that they look really cool didn't they i love that but this does now give you the chance to grow even more red root floaters i absolutely love this little plant here i just can't get enough of it look at it look look at that how good does that look <laughs> it looks good in every single tank doesn't matter what's in it either like this tank's got nothing in really red root floaters so good So the Corys have now been in the aquarium for over a day and the ground, the ground, not the ground, the substrate is getting stirred up a lot. It's actually, they're doing the trick for sure. I can see that there's loads of white patches appearing and you know, the algae or cyano, I think it is just regular algae to be honest, but it has got that weirdest green, that sort of darker green tinge to it. I don't know, I'm not sure. Either way, what they're doing is working and it's really good to see. Uh, they're doing a great job. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll back off, back off. <laughs> yeah, they're doing great. I absolutely love them. I, I think they added a whole other element to the tank from a distance as well. You can just sort of see, well, not, not now, just as I say, look, they all stop. But when I'm sat down looking from far further away, like down at my desk, I can see them flying around the tank and it's really good. Discus aren't bothered by them at all anymore, which is also really good. And if you've enjoyed this video, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.